Hey, what's up, guys? The Shocktober Book Club uh, continues <laughs> uh, with uh, some more stuff. Of course, I keep telling you, I'm a Halloween 365 guy. So this season, you know, it doesn't, hmm, it doesn't mean as much to me, or I should say it doesn't have, oh, it's the horror month. It's, it is, it is, but for me, it's all year round. Uh, and uh, to me, what I like most about October is that it cools off, <laughs> you know, but, um, there's some books here, the Giallo scrapbook, right? The Giallo is Italian for yellow, okay? It's in reference to the, the pulp, right? The pulp uh, novels, thrillers that these were derived from. I got this at Kim's video. Remember Kim's video uh, in New York, at St. Mark's Place, bro, in East Village. I used to hang out there in the late 80s, all through the 90s, and into the 2000s, man. Uh, and I went there recently, uh, well, recently, like I think before this, uh, the, the global, um, you know, situation, and uh, it's everything is gone. Maybe the left wing bookstore is still there, but everything is gone, you know. Uh, and uh, Kim's has ended long ago, you know. St. Mark's Comics is gone. Of course, Coney Island High has been gone for a long time, but anyway, let's stop. Enough of that. Uh, the Jal Scrapbook, Midnight Media. I think that's a British company, right? Sus I like that. In Japan, uh, Deep Red, they call it Suspiria 2. <laughs> uh, what can you say about Jalos? This is, uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, from England. Um, this is a great setup in terms of, this is a great uh, covering of just a fraction of these Jalos. Yeah, there's so many of these things. Everybody, they were fashionable to make at one time. But uh, the things I like about them is that uh, they sort of prefigure the slasher film, right? Uh, they're, they're thrillers, right? They're, they're, they're gory, intense thrillers. But the themes that I like uh, in these films are their decadence, okay? They usually take place in Rome, okay? Uh, everybody is, you know, the women are hot. You know, the men, you know, there's... You know, there's a, <laughs> the police are are incompetent and corrupt. You know, there's a lot of politically incorrect humor. There's a, there's always there's always a gay you know a gay character there that, that comes off as uh, uh, of the time. Let's say, hey, bird with the crystal plumage, man. This is Dario's first uh, film or his first big film. What a brilliant film. You know, and what's nice about the Jalos too is that you know they're very uh they believe in equality. A lot of the killers are crazy women, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, the the way it's set up too, they get to the point. They tell you who's who's uh you know what its place in the uh, the lexicon is, the different names of it. You know, they all had different names, and a lot of these are not in English. A lot of these were never translated. You know, they're just subtitled. I, there's a channel on YouTube. I think it's on YouTube uh, with all Jalos on it. I gotta. I would shout it out, but I don't want to do the. You know, the, I don't want to shout out too many channels playing stuff because I don't know. You know, uh, you want to talk about copyright. Well, going back in the day, uh, movie rights. You know, from the bootlegs to what's being streamed and everything. Well, that was going back a long time. You had to watch out for that. Uh, and I never was it. Uh, What's the one with the, yeah Deep Red? Oh man, dude, Deep Red, Four Flies in Gray Velvet, and Bird with the Crystal Plumage. That's the best films that Dario ever did uh, in this genre. Yeah. Uh, don't torture a duckling. Uh, is this really a giallo? I I guess it is a giallo. You know this scene in the graveyard. But you know what? I gotta focus on it, and I gotta get to other books here. Uh, Seven Bloodstained Orchards. Yeah, you can find these films if you look for them, uh, especially on BitChute, but I don't want to say where. Yeah. Um, I never saw Stage Fright. Uh, Tenebre, oh man. So I talk about music. The, the music of all this stuff is really good. You have jazzy scores, you have uh, you know prog rock, you have minimalist synth, you have all kinds of stuff here. Uh, all right, okay, this book. I remember I got this at a used bookstore for a dollar in uh, Port Jervis. Um, I could not. I was I was trying to read this book. I could not finish reading this book. Okay, this book it probably is one of the, this. This disturbed the hell out of me. Okay, and all it is about people being buried alive throughout history, anecdotes, um, 
some of the stores are really fucked up, man. Right? Um, and you had, I like, they have a lot of pictures of people who were aware that this was happening, so they would make uh, little devices, like a little bell or whatever. Um, and they say, you know, uh, and they even caught, they even mentioned, like, uh, yeah, I like the schematics of, uh, you know, was this a waiting mortuary, which is funny because now they just embalm everybody. Uh, but just, you know, of course they cover pole. You know, the big Rao Paul has his own thing, but this book was just anecdotes. Uh, you know, it really, I mean, it's a great book on the subject, but I, ha I had a feeling reading this that was so, uh, it was of horror. I, I had to stop reading it. You know, that's probably the only book I think I've, I've ever had that happen. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have to try to do it again though, because you know, you gotta, you gotta man up, son. You know, you gotta do it. Um, and they and I like that they don't they don't even mention they go yeah I mean in Europe you know you had this okay uh, and certain religious groups who bury their people real quick uh, went through this a lot okay uh, and they don't even mention you know the whole Middle East or in China the the many stories of people being buried alive in China I remember there was a story relatively recently I think it was in the two thousands of uh, some some guy drank too much and they buried him alive somewhere in rural China and. Uh, they, 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 the, the people dug them up, you know, the officials were like, yo, you can't just be burying people. And it, it was, they opened up the coffin and it was a nightmare. I, I remember hearing that story, it made me sick. Okay. It's really sick because the true horror of that is the utter nihilism of that. The people that condemned you to a horrible death were people that probably loved you. Okay. Right. That's why I keep saying, you know what? The pagans had it right. You know, you leave the body there for, you know. Nature to take, yeah. Uh, that's why those dolmens, those pagan things, you can go in and out of them. Of course, there's other reasons for that, but this was just like, oof, man, Ooh. fucking got the chills. All right, so this, I remember seeing this. I finally got this paperback from hell. No, this is right. The twisted horror of seventies and eighties horror fiction. It's like Tor was a big horror. I used to when I started reading, right? I believe it or not, I I was able to read even when I was younger. When I started reading horror novels, right? Um, I, I just couldn't get enough of them. And that period of time, man, the 80s, right? Uh, especially the mid to late 80s into the, like the, the early 90s, man. There was, everywhere you went, you had uh, horror novels. Horror was huge. Right? Anne Rice, uh, King, uh, what was that, Kuntz, uh, all these people. And the covers, man. The, the, this book is pretty much about the history of the horror, but uh, the covers... I mean, literally, it was like, what? What? What is it like? It was like heavy metal back in the day when you didn't know, you would go in, maybe you heard of a band, you didn't know, but you would look at the cover of the cassette and you say, you know what? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna spend my, you know, what money I have, uh, I'm gonna spend it on that, uh, you know, because it looks cool. And it's just interesting. It shows how, of course, like most things, when something is popular, it, it ooh, look at that. Hey, <laughs> Satan's mistress. Uh, when something gets popular, uh, you know they they uh, the you know the capitalist pigs try to uh, get s squeeze every penny out of it. You know, but uh, and of course, there's eventually you know horror. Is, you know, I mean, there's a the bookstores that are left don't even have a horror section. But man, I could just stare at all these uh, covers for ages. And some of them, uh -huh, I'm trying to see if there's one I actually had one of these. Um, yeah, the vampire stuff was good. Remember the vampire tapestry? I didn't read the whole thing, but I read part of it. That was a fascinating vampire book. There was more. There was other vampires that had come out. A Hotel Transylvania. That was uh, Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough. Actually, uh, I'm gonna admit to this. Some of her books were really good. You know, uh, Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough. Now I look back and it's like, okay, this is written for women. Right? At least Anne Rice was. Was I mean, she could be grisly to give her credit. And uh, Fever Dragon, I'd never read it. That's George R. R. Martin, right? The first time I ever heard of his name was with with the horror novel. So, but where's it? This one, okay. I bought this. I remember I I, uh, I got this novel. I think uh, in uh, what is it uh, in Allentown in the I forgot the the mall. I forgot the, I can't believe I forgot the name. It's the one I walked to when I uh, well that's a whole other story. <laughs> Nightblood. This was pretty cool. This was literally the vampire hunter in this. He's a Vietnam vet. He, he doesn't even bother with stakes. He just gets a lot of firepower 
Uh, and if you shoot the vampires enough, you know, you, you essentially decapitate them and you, you stake their hearts. It was an interesting book. Pretty fucked up. The, the villain, I remember, was really a real degenerate. Uh, but hey, it's vampires. And also, uh, Cyber Hager, the Dracula tapes. That, you the Dracula tapes. Does anybody remember the Dracula tapes? It's, it's, it was a revision of the Dracula story. And done in a clever way that I don't feel is subversive, to be frank. Uh, but, you know, say what you want. And, of course, well, look at the Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. Hey, man. Yo, Anne Rice. Those early novels, those were those were probably the most nastiest, bleakest mainstream novels that you ever could have. Okay? And I like the, I like the, <laughs> I like the cover. It's like, oh, it's a romantic. Oh, you know, the women are going to get it. I remember when I first read it. Uh, actually, I read it in a bookstore. And I, the, the scene I read was Lestat first uh you know putting the fangs on uh louis uh, and being really like hey what the hell is this <laughs> wait this is a guy anyway but uh you know and look at that the old novel oh they actually had a photo actors look at that anyway going through here i gotta wrap this up uh yeah just got the art the burnt offerings i remember that that was another that was like kind of like uh with oliver reed i remember the ending of that was crazy Anyway, I could go through this forever, but this was a, this is, like I said, this is a good book. And, uh, what is it? I'm trying to see, yeah, of course, Jaws, I remember, like, oh, you know. <laughs> no, recommended book, man. The guy, I mean, not just the art, the guy goes over, you know, how it goes, and eventually it fell out of favor, right? And now Tor is like, you know, they, everything is woke uh, to the to the gills because uh, it's, it's that historical process has now unfolded to the next level so but it was a lot of fun you could probably find these if you could find a used bookstore uh, most of them were crappy you know or, or okay you know what was the one they had the one here what was it i can't let this go what was the one with the crabs apparently it was a british guy oh this guy remember robert mccammon um it was a british dude it was a british series about killer crabs i can't find it anywhere in here but it's in here I just remember seeing those, and I never bought them, and there was like six of them. I'm like, damn, dude. How are you going to talk about killer, have a thing about killer crabs all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Was that killer? All right, so, Orca. All right, let me, let me finish this off. <laughs> yeah, really, really good, man. Okay, Analog Nightmares. The shot on video horror films. Of, you know, oh, excuse me, of the, of when it started to only to 95. Now, uh, this was a fascinating book. It was a fascinating book on particularly the early stuff where VHS, the VHS market was just looking for content. So you had people uh, shooting stuff on beta cams, you know, renting video cameras, you know. Um, they didn't really start using prosumer stuff until later, but... Uh, just the idea of making your own people making their own films okay outside of the hollywood system i mean literally outside the hollywood system i remember as a kid when i wanted to get in, i wanted to be a filmmaker because you know <laughs> uh the problem was i remember uh, this book i read where it's like okay you have to budget your costs okay it's for film processing uh it was like it was going to come out to about let's see about $360,000 I remember reading that, you know, working at Dan, working at Models, you know, the sporting goods, and reading that and, and being like, ah, oh, well, that's the end of that <laughs> dream, right? Uh, and then you start seeing shot on video stuff. Now, this is a great book, a lot of photos. I mean, the guy covers the most obscure things, and you can see a lot of these films uh, on, you know, the tubes and the shoots and whatnot. I will say, though, that. I'm not, most of these films, I wouldn't say they're garbage, uh, like, uh, what was it, uh, Redneck Zombies is, is funny, but a lot of these are kind of, you'd say cheesy, they have Todd Sheets, Todd Sheets made a lot of interesting films, you'd say they're cheesy, what I got into is when people are making films like uh, Darkness, or uh, Shattered Dead, or uh, Ozone, or The Dead Next Door, or even some later ones where, where people are trying to make them, I wouldn't say more serious, but like a little less schlocky and cheesy, right? And that's really kind of more of what I was kind of uh, into, you know, trying to make something a little better than just running around in the woods with a knife and having, you know, 
you know. But more on that later. But still, it's a great, interesting book. Okay, uh, and I recommend all these books if you're into that. And this one, oof, man, oof. careful. All right, that's later.